Nobody believed in her for two years. And now she is a billionaire who transforms the way that women show their ass. Here is 12 of the secrets to why she became so successful. Number one, she had a job she hated. So what happened was, a lot of people think that Spanx started when I cut the feet out of my pantyhose, but actually it started long before that. Mm. It started when I was selling fax machines door to door and getting my car, business card ripped up in my face, being escorted out of buildings all day, every day, that I woke up one day and just thought, I'm in the wrong movie. Like, how did this happen? This is not my life. Yeah. Cut, scene, director, like, call the producer. And I got out a piece of paper and I wrote down, what am I good at? And the only thing in the good column was sales. And I thought, okay, what am I going to do with that? And I ended up writing in my journal, I'm going to invent a product and sell it to millions of people that will make them feel good. And then I asked the universe for an idea. And I was very specific. And it took two years. And I only cut the feet out of my pantyhose one time. And I was not going to squander any idea the universe gave me because I had really asked for it. And then the minute I cut the feet out, I started trying to make it. She did whatever it took to become successful. But when I got Neiman Marcus, I think a lot of people think that's when you've arrived. No. That's when I double timed. I mean, I, I got um, on a plane and was gone for two years straight. And I went to every department store in the country that sold Spanx, every Neiman Sachs, Nordstrom, and Bloomingdale's. And I would go before the store opened and do an all-store rally and tell them what my product was, explain it to them, do a demo, give out free product, and wow. then stand there in the department for you know eight hours a day and tell customers what it was. Because I didn't have any money advertising. I was selling it for them. But what I didn't realize I was doing was I was building a sales force, not on my payroll, because all these people started to become so ambassadors. ambassadors and they were rooting for me, and they loved the product. And so that was a really important part of the formula. And then I learned what my next products were going to be because I was standing right there with customers. And I'd all say these, what they need, they what their challenge what is. Wanted. I can't do this. They blah, told blah. me what they wanted. Amazing. Yeah. This is unbelievable. You were like willing to do whatever it takes uh, above and beyond. She had the persistence to overcome rejections. I heard the word no for two straight years trying to get it made, which then increases the self-doubt that can happen. And one of the interesting things about being an inventor is you don't go to school for it. There isn't an inventor class. You can't major in inventing. And so it's really a belief system in yourself and the willingness to look stupid or to have people laugh at you or to fail at something that you believe in, you're your own gut check on that. And so it takes a lot of confidence. So that was, that was the hardest part of my journey. There was a lot of starting and stopping and like, am I crazy? And everyone's saying no. And, but I, you know, I kept picking myself back up to pursue it. Her life kind of sucked and that helped her. Well, my life was pretty much sucked. So <laughs> that always helps. Um, I was selling fax machines door to door for seven years. And um, as mentioned, you know, I, this wasn't mentioned, but I had wanted to be a lawyer. My father was a trial attorney. And I used to actually ask to get out of school growing up to watch him in closing arguments. And I debated all through high school. I debated in college. And um, I'm basically a really bad test taker. And so I bombed the LSAT. And I bombed it not once, but twice. And um, so it set my life on, on a different course. She was eager to find new solutions. I think of a lot of ideas at traffic lights. I think of them all the time in different places. And I think it's part of just being hyper observant. I, um, I like to find white space. I pay attention to what are things that haven't evolved and why. You know, like there's certain things in our society that updates itself and changes and, and, and you know constantly and then there's certain things that it's not and so I'll ask myself questions all day every day it's just the way my brain works like I could even be looking at a table and be like why is the table like that when was the table first created is that the actual best design for a table or could there be something different no fear of failure she just 
Growing up, my dad used to encourage my brother and me to fail, and he would ask us at the dinner table what we had failed at that week, and if we didn't have something to tell him, he would actually be disappointed. And I didn't realize it at the time, but he was just redefining failure for me. Failure became about not trying, not the outcome. Going through life, the only failure that I ever feel that I've had is if I don't try. So that was a real gift that he gave me. She did have a positive relationship with money. For me, I feel like money just makes you more of who you already were. It just holds a magnifying glass up to the person that you are. I don't subscribe at all to money as the root of all evil. I think money is a wonderful thing and it's great to share and it's fun to spend and it's fun to make. And I've always had a very positive outlook about what money can do. She had the desire to help people. Uh, I always knew that I wanted to help women ever since I was a little girl. So when I started Spanx, there was this moment that I thought, oh, this is how I get to where I ultimately want to be. It wasn't, oh, this is how I'm going to make a bunch of money and this is my end result. So that was very exciting to me. I did not see it coming that I was going to start with women's butts. So that was a real surprise for me, but it's actually ended up working out great. And uh, when I started the company, I would say very early on, within the first year, I started putting aside what I was comfortable with, and the portion of profits I've put aside has gotten bigger and bigger as time go goes by, and um, so I've been able to set aside quite a bit of uh, money so far. She has a big goal to change this world. I'm, I really want to solve and help the uh, equality between male and female on the planet. I think that the fact that we've held back half the human race on the planet has not served any of us. And the global issues that I'm concerned about, I believe the best way to address them is to try to elevate women as quickly as we can on the planet, give them an opportunity to fulfill their potential, and you know, the balance and harmony between male and female energy is a really important part of all of us. And thriving. So that's where my laser focus is on and I'm excited to figure out how to get there. She knew exactly what she wanted. I had been manifesting and visualizing a different life for myself. I was selling fax machines door to door and I specifically wrote down in my journal that I wanted to invent something that I could sell to millions of people and I wanted the product to make people feel good. And one day, in a frustrated moment, couldn't figure out what to wear under my white pants, like so many women, I cut the feet out of control top pantyhose and threw them on under the pants, and they worked perfectly. They, they created the perfect canvas, they didn't leave any lines, I you know, smoothed everything out, but they rolled up my legs all night. And so I said, you know, this, I gotta figure out how to make this stop comfortably below the knee and create a whole new type of undergarment for women. As soon as she got the money, she delegated what she hated. As soon as you can afford to hire your weaknesses or the things you don't enjoy as much, do it. And any time that you can delegate and clone yourself kind of and try to get some additional support, it's yeah, a great it's, moment in a small business. You know, I hired my day-to-day -day CEO about two years into starting Spanx and up until that point, you know, when you have no money, you're every department. So um, I got to learn very quickly what I'm really better at, what I'm not as good at, what I enjoy doing, what I don't enjoy doing, and I couldn't wait to hire someone to do, fill in my weaknesses and just focus on my strengths. She totally believed in her goal. And just from my cold calling days, I realized I've got to go in person to these mills. They need to meet me. They keep hanging up on me, but I have to go there in person. So I took a week off of work from selling fax machines at Danka, and I drove around North Carolina, and I went door to door to all the manufacturers that I'd been calling on the phone. Well, I would go in, and they would always ask me the same three questions, which was, and you are? And I'd say, Sarah Blakely. <laughs> and they'd say, and you're with? <laughs> I'd look around, i go, Sarah Blakely? <laughs> and they'd say, and you're financially backed by? And I'd say, Sarah Blakely. <laughs> <laughs> so
so, you know, so nice to meet you, Sarah Blakely, but we're not interested. They all escorted me out, and I didn't have any luck on that road trip. But what happened was two weeks after I drove around North Carolina in person, I actually got a phone call from one of the manufacturers in North Carolina, Sam Kaplan, in Charlotte, and he said, I quote, Sarah, I have decided to help make your crazy idea. And when I asked him why he had the change of heart, he simply said, I have two daughters. <laughs> so he had run the idea by his daughters. They said, it's brilliant, Dad, help this girl make it. And he, we set out to make it. So the process of me cutting the feet out of my pantyhose while trying to get the prototype made before I launched it was two years. So there was a, a year solid of me driving in North Carolina on the weekends and at night or taking time off from work to go and work on the prototype, get it made. So what is your big number one takeaway from this video and exactly how are you going to implement it today? Let me know in the comment section and subscribe to not miss anything. See you later.